On today's episode of Joseph's Cravens, we bid adieu. Adieu? 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 We bid adios to a local Fondren favorite, Barrel House. The historic Fondren Strip in Jackson, Mississippi was a popular shopping destination for residents many years ago. Then it fell into disrepair as those residents moved away. The natural flow of city life. When I was in college, a few businesses were fighting to turn Fondren back into a place people liked to go to. People who weren't also looking for drugs. Behind the efforts of legendary destinations like the Fondren Beverage Emporium, Roosters and Sneaky Beans Coffee Shop, Fondren soon went from a hive of scum and villainy to a hub for local art and music eventually mighty morphing into the epicenter of the Jackson local food scene boom. Right in the middle of that famous Fondren strip stood the most direct metaphor for Fondren's transformation, an old storefront that became an art gallery and would eventually become a restaurant. And much like the gradual improvements over the years, that restaurant would also take its time before arriving. It felt like it took 20 years for Barrel House to finally open its doors due to delays in the renovations, but those of us who lived in the neighborhood waited patiently. My wife and I were there as soon as it opened. There was no way we would know that in a mere six years, we would also be there in its final week of business. In early 2023, Barrel House announced that trying to survive the past several years of national and local instability had finally taken its toll, and they were having to make the hard choice to close their doors. The Fondren neighborhood, who waited so patiently for them to to arrive years earlier showed up in full force to say one last thank you and to send them out in style. It warmed the heart to see a packed house, to have one last moment to savor favorite delights that only Barrel House could serve up. Anyone who had ever gone to Barrel House knew that the meatballs were a necessity, something that the waiter rightfully should have ready and waiting for you by the time they bring you water at the start of the meal. It should just be expected, like chips and salsa at one of the 17,000 Mexican restaurants located nearby. The Barrel House meatballs came in pork, beef, or chicken, with an option in sauces as well. Our final night there, we went with the beef meatballs, covered in a parmesan Parmesan cream sauce. We could have done another delicious sauce like the basil pecan, or we could have gone with a completely different option, like their famous tuna poke nachos or their brisket tots. That was kind of the point. There were always options at Barrel House. We had explored those options, as Ellie and I had made our way to Barrel House so many times over the years for our regular date nights. We had a routine of going out on Mondays to mourn the loss of the previous weekend, and nearly every Monday was a question of Barrel House or somewhere else with Barrel House winning out most of the time. It was a staple in our lives. Ellie knew as soon as we arrived that she wanted the fish of the day, a dish that she had fallen in love with over the last year specifically. I will never be able to tell you what exactly was in the mysterious sauce that lay on top of this daily fish, partly because I would never be able to deduct with my amateur taste buds what it is that the chef had concocted to top such a well-prepared fish dish. But mostly I would never be able to figure it out because Ellie would have finished the entire entree within about 35 seconds of it arriving at our table. Personally, I had prepared myself to order the pork chop, which had also become a favorite over the past year. But I could have gone with countless other options that I knew I could rely on. The country Cuban, for example a Mississippi take on my personal favorite sandwich. And this country Cuban was a sandwich I ate very often. But the waiter tonight asked me point blank if I had ever had the steak before. And you know what? I had not. I don't typically get steaks at restaurants. They're typically more expensive and come with more risk than I have by cooking a steak at home the exact way that I like it to be prepared. Terribly. But the waiter didn't need to twist my arm. I would never be here again. Why not get something I'd never gotten on the final time that I would ever sit within these walls? Walls. I will always be happy that I made this decision. It was a flawless cut of beef, one in which you could basically taste the flames that had kissed it. And that I don't mean that in a weird way. I really promise I did not want that statement to sound so strange, but there's really no other way for me to say it. If you've had a properly charred steak, you know exactly what that means. You don't taste the meat, you don't taste the char, you taste the flames itself. And it's like tasting the face of God. Okay, yeah, no, I see where I got carried away. I could go on about the sides if I wanted to. I could go on about how these steak frites were perfectly crispy underneath, offering just the right crunch to complement the tenderness of the tato. I could tell you that I don't like sweet greens, the kind of mustard greens that have been cooked with something along the lines of molasses to offset the natural bitterness of the leaf and how I prefer the bitter, leafy greens. But for whatever reason, I adored the sweet greens that Barrel House made, and I ate them with a reckless abandon. But I won't bore you with the tales of these side dishes because Barrel House is closed and gone and you will never get to eat there. I did though, and I enjoyed it often. 
They say the brightest stars burn the fastest, I, I think. I think that's a thing people say. It might not be a saying, I really don't know. Not every restaurant is meant to be open for like 100 years. Doesn't that sound kind of exhausting? Sure, it's nice to have the charm and familiarity of a place that seems to have always existed, but it's just as nice to have the excitement of something new and fresh arrive. And there's something poetic about something that doesn't stay too long so that the newness and excitement hasn't fully worn off. What seems to really matter is not the amount of years that a place stays open, but whether the place will be remembered years after it is gone. What matters is whether you'll be sitting with your friends after some time has passed and you say, oh man, I miss the Cherokee, or I miss Feathered Cal, or Sophomore Spanish Club, or whatever the place may be that you miss. It's important to miss these places, to genuinely hold on to the memory of eating there, because I can't tell you how many restaurants that closed whose names I don't even remember at all. It's time was short on this earth and in this Fondren strip, but Barrel House will be remembered. It will be added to that list of restaurants that we say we miss years from now. It was a good six years, Barrel House, and while your doors may have closed, the memory of what you gave us won't fade anytime soon.